Next on UMass Hoops Insider, the Minutemen host the George Washington Colonials in an important Sunday showdown. We'll preview the matchup with Coach Kellogg. And on a day when the Minutemen honor his legacy, we look back at the remarkable career of UMass legend Jack Lehman. Plus, we see what some of our players have planned for Valentine's Day. Love is in the air. UMass Hoops Insider starts now. Now the UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca-Cola. It's been a full week since UMass last took to the court, and with the sour taste of two road losses still in their mouths, the Minutemen are anxious to finally get back to business. They'll do so on Sunday afternoon when they host the GW Colonials at the Mullen Center. Well, today, Coach Kellogg joins us inside the Minutemen locker room. You've spent a lot of time in this locker room this week. No games in the midweek. What have you worked on during the bye week? Well, it's been a busy week. It feels like a, a preseason practice again. We've really worked on our defensive intensity, uh, tried to get back to the basics of how hard you have to play with some toughness, some passion, and really just got after it on both ends of the floor. Lots of practice time, or do you give them some time to focus on their studies? I would say a combination of both. Uh, you know, academic work is uh, very important this time of the season, especially with how many midweek games we've had with the travel. So we've concentrated on academics and athletics and really get after it in both aspects. Ready to look at the Colonials? Absolutely. Let's do it. It's the game on Sunday at 4 o'clock. UMass and George Washington. Well, GW, one of the surprise teams in the league so far this season. They were picked 10th in the preseason poll. Then they lost all-conference preseason player Lasan Chroma to injury before the season even began. But, Coach, they started 3-0 in the league, and now they're right in the middle of the pack of the standings with UMass. How about them so uh, far? It just shows you this league how crazy it can be. Any game... Uh, any time of day, week, uh, anybody can beat uh, whatever team you're playing. So this is going to be a tough game for us. A team that's very similar to us in the, the age of the players, the record of the teams, and kind of our overall uh, scheme of things. So this is a, a big game on Sunday against a team who I respect of how hard they play and how they compete. Well, the tip-off will be at 4 o'clock. There's no live television coverage, so make sure to come out to the Mullen Center. Of course, you can always listen on the radio and internet on the UMass Sports Network. Well, Sunday is also the annual Lehman Legacy Game as UMass honors its former coach, administrator, and broadcaster by raising funds for a scholarship that bears his name. Jack passed away in 2004, but his impact on the UMass campus can still be felt to this day. With more, Big Y presents a look back at the career of Jack Lehman. In 1961, UMass head coach Matt Zunick brought in a former player of his from Boston University to become an assistant, 28-year-old Boston native Jack Lehman. Five years later, after then-coach Johnny Orr's sudden resignation, athletic director Warren McGurk promoted the little-known Lehman to head coach. He was a guy that came out of BU where, where he played, and, uh, and he had no big prior record as a coach. He came to UMass as a pretty young guy. When Johnny Orr left in the mid-60s, and they went right out and offered it to Jack, he was ready to come in and do the job and he showed that. It didn't take long for the new coach to turn the Redmen into a Yankee Conference powerhouse. After compiling a losing record in his first year, Lehman's strong leadership and legendary attention to detail helped lead UMass to a first place conference finish in eight of the next nine seasons. Coach Lehman was a patterned offense and despite how good you were or how good you thought you were, your job was to play the role there was a fast break and you didn't hit the open man in practice, you stopped the practice and he'd introduce you to the person and say, that, that's, that's Johnny, that's, he's your t teammate, he was ahead of you, you passed the ball. He was a coach in the, in the strictest sense of the word. He was a guy, he was a field general. He was a guy who when you looked in the sideline, you knew who the coach was. It wasn't like, is it that guy, is it the guy sitting? He had that court presence that distinguished himself as a coach. Jack was a pretty intense guy. I think everyone recognizes that. Um, very focused on the details, a no-nonsense kind of guy. He's such a passionate guy and he loved to coach and he loved to teach more than coaching. He was, he was a great teacher of the game. Coach Lehman developed a pipeline between the talent-rich Long Island area and Amherst, one that would land UMass standout players like Julius Irving, Al Skinner, and Rick Pitino. UMass presented something very unique and that was the relationship between Jack Lehman and Ray Wilson, who was my high school coach. They had attended BU together. UMass offered me a personal experience that I wouldn't have gotten elsewhere because of their relationship, and I think that was the driving influence for deciding to go there. With all the great talent aboard, Lehman's teams made the NIT six times in the first eight years of the 1970s. 
Coach, you knew Jack Lehman both when you were a player and then later you were a co-broadcaster on the radio <laughs> network with him. Talk about what he meant to you. Well, Coach Lehman, uh, as he is known to me, is uh, a person that has the uncanny ability to make everybody he comes into contact with feel good. Whether you're a player, a coach, a person passing by on the street, he was just an unbelievable figure and, and he represented UMass to, the, to its core and just an unbelievable person whose legacy lives on. Uh, his wife Rita and, and Lori Lehman, and his daughter, are just two great people that come to all the games and support us still. And um, his name and legacy will live on forever here at UMass. And so many people look forward to the Lehman Legacy game like we have this Sunday every season. Well, it's time now to take a look back at some highlights. Only one game since our last show from the Minutemen. A trip to Philadelphia last Saturday night in a game that went right down to the wire with St. Joe's. Let's take a look back, Coach, shall we? It's instant replay. Farrell lobs it. Sean Carter slams it in. What a catch and a finish by Sean on the pass by Farrell, and it's 7-3. Farrell into the lane. Farrell leaves it off for Sean Carter, and he'll rock the rim with a slam dunk. Gray leaves it for Farrell into the lane. Nice pass over for Bailey. Pump fake banks it in. Count it, and a foul for Big City. Nine on the shot clock. Roy Bentley with a 10-point lead. Left corner, Galloway got open for three, and he makes it again. Langston Galloway is single-handedly crushing the Minutemen's hopes tonight. Galloway, here's Riley inside the arc this time, spinning, floating, and scoring from inside the paint. Riley the last five. Timeout, Phil Martelli, and UMass is back within six. Minutemen get it to Riley from Correa, down by five. As we approach the five-minute mark, Riley for three. He's got it. That one was maybe forced, but when Freddie's feeling it, he's feeling it. Riley from Correa for three again. It's good again with a hand in his face. He's hit. Wow, some long-range shots. UMass down by four now. Riley is the fourth guard. He's had 11 recently. Now Correa for three at the top, and it's good. And Gary gets UMass back within a point. Galloway who throws it away. Threw it right to Correa. Correa to Riley, open three ball. Good. One point game, Freddie with his fourth three in the final eight and a half minutes. Devon Farrell has shot only two of nine from the field. He's three of five at the foul line. He did miss the second. Sean Carter got the rebound. Out to Gurley. Gurley left wing three is good. One point game. Well, it's going to be Hill getting a one and one with 3.1 on the clock. UMass has Farrell and Putney in the lane in case he misses to try to tip a rebound. Here's the front end by Hill. He did miss it. Rebound grabbed by St. Joe's, and they dribble out the clock and upset the Minutemen to break a nine-game losing streak. So the Minutemen are now 13-9 overall and still 5-4 in the conference as they come off the week-long layoff to host George Washington on Sunday. Well, since returning from a lengthy absence at the beginning of Atlantic 10 play, senior point guard Gary Correa has been a calming influence on both ends of the court and recently has done a great job distributing to get baskets for his teammates. To break down his recent assist work, here's Coach Kellogg in the film room. It's Coach Chalk Talk. Here we are in front of the brain once again, and today we get a special treat. Our senior point guard, Gary Correa, and you'll watch how he does a great job of running our team, and we'll see all of his assists in the last couple games where he's looking for his teammates, getting player shots, and really doing a nice job of running our club. Here we go against St. Bonaventure. He gets what we call a drop layup here, which is a backdoor cut by Javon. He drops a nice bounce pass for a layup. Here we go, ball screen middle. He throws the lob pass to Sean Carter. Freeze. What we teach our point guards and our guards is when you drive and the big guy comes, we want you to throw that lob pass over the top, and that's what GC did right there. Next play up. GC pushing the ball in transition, finding the big guy underneath with a nice zip pass and in one by TV Terrell Vinson. Great job by GC there. Here he is in transition, finding our man, the putt man. Nice ball fake, drive and one there, take it to the basket. Here he is in transition, freeze. This pass here, where we drive it one way and throw it across the court is called our skip pass. When our offense is very effective, we're looking to get passes from this side over across the court. Skip passes make the defense move. And he finds our man Freddie Riley, who raises up and knocks down a three. And you'll see a few more where we're looking for Freddie against St. Joe's. A little dribble handoff play. Freddie raises up and knocks it down to keep our momentum going. Here we are in transition. Once again, freeze. We're looking for the hot player, the hot shooter. A good point guard, when a guy gets it going, is looking for the guy who's made his last couple shots. GC does a nice job here of letting the big guy cut through and finding Freddie Riley who raises up and knocks it down. Great job by both players as we started getting momentum. GC's done a great job in the last few games of really finding players, getting guys shots, and when a player gets hot, a player gets going, gets going whether it's Anthony Gurley, Freddie Riley, whoever it might be, Javon, the point guard's job is to keep that guy going and get our offense rolling. 
Thanks to Coach In The Brain. We gotta take our first break in the program, but when we come back, we'll have a memorable yet also forgettable flashback for you from another George Washington UMass matchup at the Mullen Center. Stay tuned. Why shop at Big Y? Because we do windows and shelves and floors. We even wash cars. Our customers tell us time after time. Your stores are really clean. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy all over. Fuzzy's good. <laughs> We're also known for something else around here. Shoppers cleaning up with our sales. Only the best for your family. The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! UMass! Tickets now. Call 1 866 UMass TIX or visit UMassAthletics.com. Welcome to My Coach. Choose your sport. My Coach says I gotta get faster. My Coach says I gotta gain speed. My Coach says just listen to my voice. My Coach says I know what you need. My Coach says I'll be faster on the fast break. My Coach says I'll be faster through the hole. My coach said, I'll be faster to the ball. My coach said, be faster. It's 2010. What happened to cloning ourselves? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can copy real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't you have more use? I have the foundation that I need. I mean, they had the bad one that made my skin break out, but I am not buying that. Oh. <laughs> we don't know how it would work. Mm. But we do know things can be cloned. I'm looking at you scientists. Da, 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 da. The UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca-Cola. We're back at the Mullen Center, where like they're doing behind me, the Minutemen have been on the practice court getting ready for George Washington all week long. Speaking of UMass GW, our 95-96 flashback takes us back to a memorable game between those two squads. The Minutemen came in riding a 26-0 start, but waiting for them that Saturday was Mike Jarvis, Alexander Cool, Shante Rogers, and the tough GW Colonials. Let's take a look back, February 24th, 1996. Amherst, nestled in the sleepy countryside of South Central Massachusetts, it's Mullen Center, home of top-ranked UMass. They're number one and undefeated at 26-0. I'm looking at this saying they're not carried away with themselves. They don't seem to be pressured into having to win games. I keep telling them, hey, we lose, we're 26 and 1. Who cares? I mean, we're still fine. Uh, they're playing and practice hard. Uh, they're caring about one another. No one, there's no friction on the team that we need to help uh, bring them back together, uh, bring them down to earth. I don't see a purpose in a loss right now. So the number one team in the nation, UMass, plays host to arch rival George Washington. With talk of an undefeated season reaching a crescendo, the Minutemen finally tripped up in late February against nemesis George Washington. George Washington was always a thorn in our side. They always seemed to always play us tough and always seemed to beat us. We had 26 in a row. They came in our building and beat us. I'm still upset about that one. The biggest surprise to me was that the one regular season game they lost was at home. I didn't think that was going to happen. But that particular day wasn't their day. John got ejected from the game, and they probably would have lost even if he hadn't have been. I think that's the only game I've ever been thrown out of in my coaching career, before or after. Um, I've been, I've deserved to be thrown out of other games. That one I didn't. Coach Calipari was ejected for the first time in his career during that loss, but the Minutemen would rebound. They'd win their next nine games before the national semifinals. 
Hey, before each home game here at the Mullen Center, some of the biggest supporters of the Minute Minute program gather right up on the third floor. We thought we'd give you a glimpse of what goes on in those pregame receptions. Let's take a look. We usually have a, a pregame reception before all the UMass basketball games and some of the hockey games. So we have a good time, come up, a little camaraderie with uh, the various donors and uh, people who have uh, sports enthusiasts that are supporting UMass basketball. These pre-games are very good because a lot of the people that uh, are real supporters of UMass get together and uh, it's a real good way of getting, uh, discussing the game uh, on you know, a pre-game basis. There's, a, there's food, there's a lot of good camaraderie and uh, it's just a lot of people who really uh, follow the team and get a chance to, to discuss the game, upcoming game and the game that was just played. I love these events. A lot of the games are during the week when I'm working. I don't get back at the town till 6 and I come up here, I have a quick bite to eat and uh, I see a lot of people with the same interest having a great time and talking basketball. I started going to University of Massachusetts in the fall of 1972 and I think I've been a fan ever since. Uh, I graduated in 76 and starting in around 1980 I've been coming back to all the games. I probably had seasons for about 28 years. It's just a great place to catch up with, with a lot of people that you see many of the events and some people don't come at all of them and uh, it's just a, it's a lot of fun. Well that was great to see all my good friends who uh, are court club members. The court club is so important to me in the program for their support, their dedication and, and that they're always there for the team and the program. Next up, when we come back, is an X's and O's section where you'll get some basketball knowledge from Coach Kellogg and the staff. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Why shop at Big Y? Because we stand behind our quality. Literally. <laughs> because my beef is all natural Angus from the USA. My strawberries are all Driscoll's. And I grind our beef fresh all day long. We have the best sales week after week. And everything's guaranteed fresh. Fresh. Fresh as one of these. Only the best for your family. From ours. Welcome to my coach. Choose your sport. My coach says I gotta get faster. My coach says I gotta gain speed. My coach says just listen to my voice. My coach says I know what you need. My coach says I'll be faster on the fast break. My coach says I'll be faster through the hole. My coach says I'll be faster to the ball. My coach says be faster. Hi, my name is Chris Kirkland, UMass Minute Man for Life, graduated in 2000, back to support my guys here. All, all the warm welcomes, you know, all the hard work we put out there, the fans gave back to us. You know, the crowd, the fans, just the, the, just the competitiveness from here. Right now I'm working in uh, retail manager and I'm volunteering to help some of the kids that you see here today. Like I said, I want to get them the college experience, have those guys come back, see where I played, see what it's like on the college level. Chris Kirkland scored over 900 points and grabbed over 500 rebounds in his four years wearing the maroon and white, all of which he played for under then head coach Bruiser Flint. Great to catch up with Chris Kirkland. Well, all week the Minutemen have been preparing for George Washington, like they're doing behind me here on the practice court. They didn't have a midweek game, so let's go back to Coach Kellogg and see what drills they've been doing in preparation for the Colonials on DK's X's and O's. 
Today you're going to see our, uh, Coach Adam Ginsberg working with our big guys. We're doing our what we call our quick up and relocation drills. Our quick up is an opportunity for when the point guard drives or any guard, we want our big guys to catch the ball and get it to the rim really quick. So we'll take a coach and we're rifling balls at the big guys and you'll see how they get them to the rim as fast as we can before the defense can react. Let's get them up quick, Sean. See, we we're trying to catch and get them to the rim quick, working on our hand-eye coordination. Get them up, get them up. Good, working on his left hand finish. Just a good way for our guys to get loose, work on their hand-eye coordination, and work on the guard driving and giving them a quick dish, getting it to the rim. Get it up. Come on, City, get it up, get it up, get it up. Good, good, good. Come on, come on, come on. Good. Relocate, finish. Quick up to the rim, quick up to the rim. Good, good, good. Good. And then the last one, Coach will try to throw it off the backboard to make it difficult. These are our lob passes to the big. Lob passes to the big. Good, finish, come on, finish. The next drill, which is part of the uh, quick ups, is our relocation, where we're driving the ball to the basket at the big guy. We want our big guy to relocate, which means he gets away from the ball handler, and he either cleans the ball off the rim on a shot from the guard, or we'll throw the lob pass. And uh, you've seen many times in our team, in our games, where our guards, when we drive, I want them to throw the lob pass to the rim, or get it over the big guy who's trying to block it so that the big guy can do what we call a clean up. Here we go with our relocation finishes. Sean's gonna get away from the drive, Seal off the defense and finish. Good, good. If the, if the offense drives away from him, he seals the defender and looks to finish. If he drives at him, he relocates, goes to the rim and finishes. Good, 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 good. Lob, finish, Maxie. We like to finish above the rim, catching it with two hands and finishing. Good, good, good. Come on, Drew, come on, Drew. Finish, 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 two hands. Good, good, good. Here we go, City. Good, good. Finish, City, finish. Good, good. Two hands, two hands, good. Go above the rim, guys, come on. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, Coach, lots of practice this week. Kind of get back to fundamentals. Absolutely. And I love the ability to spend time with my team to really teach and coach, whether it's an individual, whether it's a team drill, something that's going to help them get better and uh, really elevate their game for the remainder of the season and, and really for their careers here. All right. We've got to take our final break in the program. But you know what's around the corner, Coach? It's Valentine's Day on Monday. So when we come back, we're going to ask some of the guys what their plans are for St. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Stay tuned. Amherst Alumni Association provides resources for alumni and students like campus to career programs, online tools, scholarships and mentoring opportunities that prepare students for, for life, life after, after graduation. graduation. The Alumni Association sponsors student traditions and athletic events. Make connections at social, professional, and cultural alumni events across the country. You are! You are! You are! It's 2010. Weren't we supposed to have time machines by now? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can give the world real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't science give us an unlimited supply of do-overs? Man, you dance like a man. I, d I dance like a man? What? No, wait. <laughs> mm. We bent the rules of taste. Physicist, isn't it time to bend time? Da, 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 da. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. The UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Welcome back. Don't forget, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, UMass and George Washington, right here at the Mullen Center. And you know, Monday, it's the biggest Hallmark holiday of them all. That's right, St. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And since there's no game for the Minutemen, we were wondering what some of the players have planned for the evening. Let's check out and see what they said on our Valentine's Day Hookie Lao Lighter side. Usually we have like a game or practice, usually, so I think on Valentine's Day. I haven't had a girlfriend in 
year or so. I never bought buy nobody nothing but my mom, so that's about it. Send flowers and chocolate. That is it. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, but uh, you got a wife who's living in Memphis. That's why I send it. Nice and simple and easy. I don't have a routine on Valentine's Day, fortunately. In the past couple of years, I haven't been in a relationship on Valentine's Day, so I haven't had to get anyone anything. No, I'll probably get some roses, candlelight. Um, might cook a nice meal. Last year, I think my meal was Roman noodles. I think I was going to wind it down with some Roman noodles. But this time, I think I'm upgraded to take it to maybe Outback or, you know what I'm saying, Applebee. What do you send to your mom? It's usually a card, you know, I'm, I'm never, I'm always too far. Money's short, so I just get her a card. That's good enough though, I bet. Yeah, for her it is, yeah. How hard is it with the uh, with the spouse elsewhere on Valentine's Day? Is that a sad day? Uh, it's tough, I'm not gonna lie, it's tough, but she's been coming up here the past couple of times, so it's worked out pretty well. What do you get your mom? Uh, get her some flowers and chocolates. Um, probably get her like a little present. I mean, a little teddy bear, probably get my little sister a teddy bear or something. How'd it work out with the ramen noodles, girl? Um, I mean, she was satisfied. I mean, long as she happy, you know what I mean? And grateful, she was grateful. You like get candles, candles with the ramen noodles? Nah, no candles came with the ramen noodles. What's the most elaborate thing you've ever seen a, a teammate do for Valentine's Day? Decorate their girlfriend's room, I think. Girlfriend's room, give them sneakers. <laughs> And all that stuff, yeah. Sneakers for Valentine's Day? Girls like sneakers. <laughs> Some girls like sneakers. Really? Yeah. Nothing says I love you like cross trainers. Yeah. <laughs> Did she send you anything? No. I, it's, it's not a, even a Hallmark card? No, it's it's the biggest lopsided holiday there is. And I'm trying to get Super Bowl Sunday as a holiday, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, I know a couple of my teammates last year on Valentine's Day went out to Holyoke Mall and they all got build a bears I seen Big City making a build a bear for, no way. <laughs> for a significant other last year. Unfortunately, I know exactly where you and I are going to be on Valentine's Day Monday night. We'll be at the hangar for our radio show, so we can spend it together. Absolutely, and I know Nicole will be happy that'll be our Valentine's Day dinner, and I didn't know we had so many Casanovas on my team. Of course you have Casanovas. <laughs> we know those guys. All right, it's time to finish the show with a look at some topics we haven't asked Coach about yet in the program. It's UMass Catering Quick Bites. It was already in the show our, a chance to talk about Jack Lehman and his legacy. Celebrating that before the game on Sunday is going to be a youth clinic. Lots of the UMass teams are going to be involved over at Gordon Gymnasium. Yeah, I think that's fantastic that we're reaching out to the youth of the area. Um, I'll have a few of my guys over there and one of my assistant coaches to make sure that the men's basketball program is well represented. And there's still time to sign up. You can call the Athletic Marketing Office for more information about that. On Wednesday, you've got one of the hottest teams on the East Coast coming in, the Duquesne Dukes. Yeah, and it was nice to listen to Joe Lenardi on the radio show talk about how they're an NCAA tournament level team. So, UMass fans, we have an NCAA tournament team coming into the Mullen Center. Come out and support us once again. Second of back-to-back -back home games, first George Washington Sunday, then Duquesne Wednesday. And speaking of the Dukes, this might be the A-10 regular season game of the year. Right before your game tips off, 2 o'clock on Sunday, it's going to be Xavier at Duquesne with first place on the line. That's going to be a battle, one that uh, I'll probably catch the highlights of after our game, and I know it's going to be a hard-fought A-10 battle. And we finish out with this. Anthony Gurley has had a great senior season, He's moving up the list in UMass history in a lot of categories, but he needs one more three-point make to pass you. Well, I'm going to make sure I don't run too many plays for him for the rest of the year. Now, congrats to Anthony. Um, he's done a great job and, and is really knocking down those, those threes to, to pass a great shooter like myself. Kill on, <laughs> girly. Maybe after the game on Sunday, that's what the list will look like. Good luck against George Washington. We'll see you here next week. Thank you. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your weekend. Hope to see you at the Mullen Center, 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. The UMass Hoops Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola, Big Y World Class Markets, Adidas, UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association, the Hookie Lao, and UMassAthletics.com.